we're rolling. Hey everybody, welcome back to a couple of cooks cooking. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, we're going to be making one of our favorite recipes. When we decided to do this channel, we weren't sure what to do for our first video. This is our very first video, so how exciting. Um, a friend of ours, Dana, if you're watching, what's up girl? Dana suggested that we use one of the recipes from the cookbook that we wrote. Um, anyway, so she said, why don't you start there? Just work through the cookbook. So we thought, well, that's a good place to start. Um, so this was a compilation at the time of what was then our favorite recipes. We have since added to this collection for sure, but we're definitely going to touch on some stuff in here. Um, so today, what we're going to be making is our the dish that we probably make the most. We eat this at least once a week, once every two weeks. It's super easy. It's so easy, and it's four ingredients. And, and, the, and the first time she made this for me, I kind of like the barbecue, and I said, that's stupid. That's you, you can't bake ribs in an oven. Turns out you can. So we're making our crispy oven baked ribs today, and we're excited to share it with you. Um, but first, uh, we don't believe any cooking should be done without a cocktail nearby. Except, except for breakfast. Uh, even so. Yeah, unless it's on the weekend. Unless it's on the weekend, which it just so happens to be Saturday afternoon here in um, sunny south of Houston, Texas. By the way, that's where we're from. Um, and so I'm going to make my favorite weekend daytime beverage, which is what I call a sunrise mimosa. So orange juice in champagne is a mimosa. Cranberry juice in champagne is called a poinsettia, if you didn't know that. Um, but I like orange juice and cranberry juice, and I call it a sunrise mimosa, and you'll see why in just a second. Now in here, I've got, um, I had two half bottles. I had a half bottle of orange juice and a half bottle of cranberry juice. So I just combine them because I'm lazy. So this is cranberry and orange juice mixed together. So it's two cups of this delicious fruit juice. And then one bottle of, I prefer Prosecco, uh, but you can certainly use champagne or your favorite brand. And then you just dump it in here. And I like to give it a little kind of circular motion carefully and you create a vortex, hopefully that gets the champagne quicker out of the bottle. It is spinning. It is spinning. And then of course I don't waste a single drop. So I make sure to get every last drippity drop out of that bottle. And I think we're good. Okay. So and, and my favorite weekend beverage is a Miller Lite. Ta-da! Good job, babe. Okay. So here we go. Let's uh, let's get ready to cook. I'm gonna go ahead and serve myself up. By the way, I never I'm doing this precious little flute for y'all um, for the show, but I never actually drink mimosas out of a flute. I always put it in my Yeti uh, tumbler. insulated <laughs> tumbler and drink it on ice with a straw because I'm classy like that. So uh, let's get to cooking. Cheers. Cheers. Oh wait, left me hanging. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, here we go. We're going to be making our crispy oven baked baby back pork ribs for you today. It's our favorite, one of our favorite recipes. We eat it all of the time here. Um, so we start with uh, a rack of baby back ribs. I like to, um, when I go to the store, if they're ever on sale, uh, I, I stock up. Like I'll buy three or four racks and just keep them in the freezer. Are you These... the membrane off? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so Brad's uh, working on this. We have got, you know, I mean, most of you probably know. On the back side, on the exposed rib side of uh, the baby back ribs, there's a membrane. Um, so we like to remove it. It's not necessary. And sometimes it's a little harder than others to pull it off. But basically you just find a piece of it that you can liberate from. Grab it with a paper towel. It makes it so much easier. That's right. So you'll get a lot better um, 
grip or traction or something that will help you hold on to that, to that piece of membrane. And if you can get a good grip on it, it just slips right off like that. Ta-da! Ta okay, excellent. Now, um, just so you know, it's just me and Brad here. We don't have any kids, so we uh, are cooking for two. And between the two of us, we can't polish off a whole rack of ribs by ourselves. So we're just going to cut this into two racks. And we're just going to prep one for dinner today. And then the other one, we're just going to save. And we'll cook it another time. Did you wash your hands? Yeah. Brad, go wash your hands. Oh, my God. Y'all, I don't even know. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. He's washing his hands now. I... And witnessing it with my own eyes. He is using soap too, by the way. Um, at least I didn't have to remind him to do that this time. Just kidding. Come on back, doll. Tell okay. the folks what you're doing. Okay, so, I mean, this is super easy. Nature seasoning. I love this seasoning so much. Here, show them here so they can get a good look at it. You've probably seen it in your store. It's available in your spice section with all the other like seasoned salts. This is our particular flavor. We've played around with quite a few different um, seasoning salts, but this is our favorite. It's got onion, salt, pepper, onion, garlic, parsley, and celery salt, which I think is the flavor that we are really that we really like with this pork recipe. So that's our seasoning of choice. But you could use whatever you like. Hey, if you've got salt and pepper, just use salt and pepper. If you want to try a different seasoning like Greek seasoning, or if you want to do herb crust, or if you want to do maybe barbecues, are you doing both racks? Yeah, I'm going to do both. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and do them both because we can certainly gnaw on these pork bones later for a snack. It's Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if we mentioned that or not, but um, it is the Saturday before Memorial Day, and we are cooking at home and hanging out and having cocktails and cork ribs and yummy stuff. So, mm. so Brad has seasoned, you want to season liberally, like more than you think. If I had to guess, I would say probably you use maybe a tablespoon per half rack, right? So if it's a full rack, maybe a tablespoon per side. It's more, it's just more than you think. But if you're using straight salt and pepper, you know, just watch the sodium. So then, um, the trick to making these crispy is... Flour. All-purpose flour. We just give it a dusting. You don't have to use a sifter. We do, because we're fancy. Um, and it makes Brad look super cool and chef-y. Mm -hmm. He's doing an excellent... You're doing an excellent job, by the way. Thanks, love. You look cute today. Did I tell you that? Yeah. He does. I'm going to get this extremely sharp knife out of the way just to make sure we don't have any incidences that can be recorded and used later in a court of law. Okay, I think we're good. So, the and, and also the trick here is make as big of a mess as you possibly can, like Brad is doing. I don't know. It somehow makes it taste better. I think it does. Yeah, for sure. Missed a spot. Yeah, try to get as get as much coverage as you can. But again, it's this is not an exact recipe. Feel free to take liberties with the seasoning. Um, you know, you can be as thorough or uh, as lax as you want with the flour. But do but do get some flour because honestly, this really is the trick that makes it crispy. So we're gonna I'm gonna pick this up, and Brad's gonna swap it out for our baking sheet. Now you want to use a. Um, you want to use a baking sheet that has a, you know, like a liner. So the grease will drip through so it doesn't like sit in. Because this is going to let off. This is going to release a bunch of a fat in the pan. And you don't really want it sitting in the fat. So um, I only sprayed this because I thought we were doing half rack. So you might want to spray it a little bit more. We're just using um, all-purpose spray, Pam or whatever you've got. Just to make sure it doesn't stick. Ugh. I think we're good. You're so good at that. Okay, so then you just place your racks on the cooking sheet. I'm going to get this out of the way now. And then you give it a spritz just on top, just a light coating of oil on the top of your ribs. That also helps with the browning and the crisping. Beautiful. Okay, so while Brad cleans up, I'm going to pop these in the oven. 
It's a preheated 425 degree oven and you're gonna pop it in there and forget about it for an hour. Could it be simpler? So here we go. Four hundred twenty-five degrees. We'll see you in an hour, buddy. And cut. End scene. Okay. So while our ribs are baking in the oven, we have an hour um, to goof around. So I like to serve these ribs with roasted Brussels sprouts because I love them and it's easy. And I just pop them in this very same oven with the ribs like the last 15, 20 minutes. And then everything comes out at the same time and you're ready to eat. So these are so good. I don't even like Brussels sprouts. Yeah. But till now I do. Yeah. I recently discovered that I like roasted Brussels sprouts with cheese sauce. What can I say? Yeah. We keep them. Um, I make cheese sauce in big batches and then I keep it in the freezer in little containers. So anytime we want cheese sauce, we just take it out and give it a thaw and what a cheese sauce. Is that what you're making? So no. Yeah, I'm doing this. Okay. So, um, my favorite seasoning for everything now is Brad has come up with this amazing AP seasoning. So it's absolutely perfect seasoning. Super easy. Or if you're not a dork like me, it's all purpose seasoning. Um, it's salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and then cayenne but we're gonna use Brad's special smoked pepper powder that he makes himself. Because at the end of every year, we got a pepper garden and we always uh, have all these peppers left over and don't know what to do with them. Yeah. So whenever- Peppers grow really great here in Texas where we are. Um, and so we, it, we just make too many peppers. We don't know what to do with them. So what I ended up doing is I'll, whenever I've got the smoker going for a brisket or a pork butt or something like that, I'll, I'll uh, I'll throw all the peppers on there and smoke them for a couple hours, and then once they've got enough smoke on them, I will uh, I'll put them in a like a 200 degree oven, 175 degree oven overnight until they get super dry. And so, I mean, you've probably seen these at the store. You know, it's just. But the cool thing is, you can do your own blend. So. I think that was an Anaheim and a that's a habanero and you know so you can mix it up I got some Thai chilies in there so you once they're all dried you can put them in a coffee grinder mm -hmm. and uh, put them in a coffee grinder you use for coffee <laughs> just get a second yeah grinder get a second grinder if you're gonna if you're gonna do that but then it makes chili powder and it, so it I mean it's really it basically just looks like regular chili powder it's not it's gonna make me sneeze. It's so good. It's smoky. It's got perfect heat. My favorite, one of my favorite ways to use that is sprinkled on um, deviled eggs. So good. So we're going to make this uh, absolutely perfect seasoning for you guys uh, so you can try it at home. Like I said, we put on everything. Meat, steak, fish, vegetables, eggs. everything. Eggs, everything. So um, we're going to do it. I uh, haven't committed this to memory. It's a part, it's a um, we're gonna make it in parts instead of measurements necessarily. So you can scale it up or down. You can make a big batch uh, and keep it in a in like a shaker or a little container, or you can make a small batch and just use it for one serving. So here it goes. Couldn't be easier. Okay, Brad thinks this is gonna be easier for me. So since he knows me so well, I'm gonna say that he's right. So we have kosher salt. We're gonna use four tablespoons. I mean, you know, whatever. Easy peasy. Done with that. Then it's so basically, it's one. It's a two parts salt and then one part ground black pepper and one part onion powder. Thank you, my lovely assistant. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I, I already messed up. I need another. Did I do two tablespoons or one tablespoon? Of pepper? <laughs> I don't know. I think I only did one. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's four tablespoons in this particular recipe. Four tablespoons of salt, so it should be two tablespoons. If I did already put two tablespoons in here, someone please comment below and tell me. Uh, like I said, I'm not very good at this. So, four tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of black pepper, two tablespoons of onion powder, two tablespoons of garlic powder, one and two. And then um, I just need so it's a quarter part 
of your pepper powder. You could use cayenne if you wanted, if you didn't have a smoked pepper powder, or if you wanted a smoky element to your seasoning, you could use chipotle, that smoked dried jalapenos and ground. Um, so it's half a tablespoon of this. I'm gonna just eyeball it. Sorry, I'm using like most of your stuff, babe. Yeah. You I saw gotta... the peppers, we, have. We, we can make more. Okay, so again, just to recap, that's four tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of pepper, two tablespoons of onion powder, two tablespoons of garlic, and half a tablespoon of cayenne, or two to one to one to one to one quarter, okay? Um, we'll put this recipe either on the screen or in the description below. We don't know what we're doing, so Once we'll, we figure, figure, it out. Out we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. And then you mix. Give it a good mix. Mixing, mixing, mix. That looks good to me. So now, I have to get this, this, into here. So what I'm gonna do is, this is what I call um, Hannah's Hacks. So I might share more of these with you along the way. So um, I don't, I mean, I don't have a large mouth funnel. So what I'm gonna do is just put the seasoning in here, like that. We're just gonna roll this up gently, like this. See? See what I'm doing? Then this piece, we're going to ball up so it keeps it together. This piece, we're going to dump in our thing. And voila. No muss, no fuss. That's it. Now we're ready to season. And this, look at this cute little shaker. It's got a lid, and I don't know where it came from. Do you know where this came from? I have no idea. But I would like to get more. If anybody knows where to find these things, uh, please comment below and let us know. I'm sure we can look on Amazon, but it'd be fun to hear from, from y'all anyway. Okay, so our seasoning is made. Now we're going to move on to my favorite side dish with these ribs, which is roasted Brussels sprouts. So again, this is a three ingredient dish. All you need is Brussels sprouts, extra virgin olive oil, and all-purpose seasoning. Which now counts as one ingredient instead of... It's one ingredient now. You're absolutely right about that. Do not be confused. This is not a eight ingredient recipe. No. Okay. So I'm just going to trim the little uh, tail ends off these Brussels sprouts. And we're lucky because we have this um, garbage can right here, which is super convenient. Brad hates the cutting board in this orientation. He... Because how are you supposed to scoop stuff into the trash can... Through, if y'all can see this ditch right here. He's so annoyed. He's just but so that's annoyed. Okay. So he'll get, he'll be okay. He'll get by. We'll figure this out. Because we love each other, right? Yes. Yes. Almost always. Most of the time. We get along pretty good, actually. We're, we're lucky. I know that right now in these uh, times that there are, unfortunately, some people that are having a hard time kind of being under the same roof. You figure out pretty quick when you're locked together. Yeah, so I hope everyone out there is, we hope everyone out there is doing well and staying strong and uh, being healthy and, um, you know, just everybody's just getting by. We're all in the same boat right about now. So um, we, uh, I feel for me, food uh, is a huge comfort and uh, cooking is a nice escape for me. Um, so maybe, maybe trying some of these recipes might work for y'all too. So we'll see. I'm going to, um, some of these are tiny and some of these are larger. So I'm probably going to leave the small ones small and cut the large ones in half. Do you agree? So. Okay. Yeah. See, we agree. You think this is, let's, I'll have you judge. What do you think is small and what do you think needs to be small? Well, the thing is, I kind of, I like them cut better because if, if you put the cut side Gets more surface area Down. brown. Okay. Um, Let's it, cut them off. It really browns nicely in the oven. Agreed. See, there's another thing we agree on. Also, I love these little leafy bits that fall off because they get really brown and crispy in the oven. So we're going to throw those in too. They're perfectly fine. And what a great vegetable. I mean, I know Brussels sprouts are like, they really had a comeback recently. They were like the new, well now kimchi's the new black, but Brussels sprouts was the new black not too long ago. People were eating Brussels sprouts again. 
the best Russell Sprout dish I think I've ever had um, was that one at that restaurant where you got the goat ragu and they had um, underbelly. It's underbelly at, here in Houston. It is since closed, unfortunately. Um, Along but, with all the other restaurants. Well, that closed before that. So, um, yeah, just let me finish my Brussels sprout story. Okay. So they made these amazing Brussels sprouts and they had um, like a fish sauce caramel kind of situation yes. going on. And they were delicious. Okay, so I'm done with that. Now, we have our cut Brussels sprouts. We're going to generously, I say generously, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons maybe. Again, we're just cooking for us, so just enough to make them all glisten. So, you know, I'm not that shy about it. But you get I, dirty and I'll shake. Yes, I want a lot of seasoning. I like to put a lot of seasoning because vegetables in their natural state are pretty bland. We all know that, so they need a lot of help. So I am really generous with your okay. seasoning. Why don't you, you start ahead? around and I'll start. Do that first and then I just shake it around. Okay. That's fine too. You're not even near. But make sure to get some not in the pan. So I have to clean it up later. Yeah. I still would put a little bit more. I mean, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm calling you. Did you call good. that a tablespoon? Um, pro, I, no, I would say that maybe a teaspoon or a couple of teaspoons. Whatever, just eyeball it, however you think. I think these need a little more, so I put a little bit more. And then, really, honestly, you don't have to get messy. I'm, oh, you know what we forgot to mention? We always line our baking dishes and cookie sheets with foil to make cleanup a breeze. Yes. Right? So... I'm when I, we're that couple that puts everything in the dishwasher. I don't care what it says on the piece of equipment. If it says it's not dishwasher safe, I am willing to test that theory, right? So absolutely. This way we don't have to we don't have to fill up our dishwasher with big pieces of dishes like this. So um, I'm just I just do this, and then it gets relatively coated. Then I turn all the cut sides down, just like this. We didn't set the timer on the ribs. We'll figure it out. It's probably been about I'm gonna call it 15 minutes. You think 15 minutes? I was thinking maybe 20. Set it as if it's 20. Okay. Yeah, so again, those ribs go for an hour in the oven. So we're going to say it's been in there about 20 minutes while we made our seasoning and prepped these vegetables. Now, these can just hang out and wait until we get to that 20 to 15 minutes left on the ribs, and then we're just going to pop them right in the same oven. And cook them side by side and then they'll like i said they'll come out together and it'll be beautiful so um i'm gonna go finish my cocktail while this finishes cooking and we'll um meet you back here in a few and we're back okay so uh it's been an hour we just pulled the ribs and the brussels sprouts out of the oven look at these beauties well we didn't just pull them out because i wouldn't be able to touch it like this they've been sitting here for about yeah, five, 10, five, 10, 10 minutes, minutes or so Look how beautiful, gold and brown and delicious. Did we tell you? I'm so excited. Okay, Brad, I'm gonna have you um, cut these up. All right, and you might wonder why I've got some mechanics gloves. I've got a buddy named Gabe that taught me this trick at a barbecue cook-off. You do a mechanics glove and then you get a regular latex glove, put it over the mechanics glove. I may or may not tear the latex gloves. I didn't. Oh my God, look at that, like a pro, Dr. And then, Montgomery. So you can grab really hot stuff without burning your hands. So if you're doing briskets or pork butts or something like that, um, but look at that. Just super, look at super that, tender. Look at that, y'all. I mean, it's like, it's, a, it's like a deep fried rib. Oh my God, y'all. It's so good, I cannot wait to tuck into these. I'm hungry too. We probably haven't eaten today. Well, there you go. I had a, like a handful of chips while I was waiting on the ribs. So it's super healthy. All right. So then for presentation, just kind of for fun, I like to make a, a rib amid. Can I see what you're doing? Let me see if I can. That camera's not capturing it. Let me tilt so y'all can see what he's doing. He's making a rib pyramid or a rib amid as he likes to call it. So there you go. And then you got the the ends are kind of 
super crispy. Ooh, that's my part. I get the ends. But uh Okay, Brad, why don't you finish up this second rack of ribs and I'm gonna finish the Brussels sprouts and then we'll sit down and eat. I don't know if rib meds are scoochable. Oh. Well, you don't have to carve this one. You can just leave it there for now. Yeah. No, I need you to move. Oh, sorry. I bet. Oh, okay, I got it. Got it. <clears throat> Okay, look at how gorgeous also our Brussels sprouts turned out to be. Aren't they so pretty? Nice crispy edges. Okay, how we like to finish them is, let's just grate a little fresh parm right over the top. So I'm just gonna do that. Yummy, 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 look at that. Make it rain, y'all, or snow. Make it snow. We're making it snow in here even though it's 90 degrees here or in Texas. Okay. Doot, doot. And let's spin. Okay. Why don't we, um, let's eat. And we're back. Oh, and we're back. Okay. So, um, let's eat. Give me that, um. You get the top one. Oh, I have to have it. Y'all, look at this. Can you see that? Can you see how crispy and golden brown that is? Ugh, it's so delicious. I can't wait to tear into that. But I'm also gonna get myself <laughs> a little smiley face. Some Brussels sprouts, would you like some? Sure. I'd be happy to serve you. Look at us eating our vegetables. Oh, they're so delicious. They don't even taste healthy. They hardly taste healthy. Hey, you're cheating. Well, we did it. Uh, we made our uh, very, one of our very favorite dishes, our deep, they're not deep fried. They taste mm. deep fried. Um, crispy oven fried baby back ribs with a side of roasted Brussels sprouts. Perfect weeknight meal. You're done in just over an and hour. You can tell. Oh. You can bite through to the bone, but it doesn't pull off. So. It's so delicious. It's not barbecue, but it's really really good it's really really good so cheers thank you good job babe Mwah. thank you for watching um if you like what we did today please subscribe to our channel uh, and look for more videos we're anxious to share our recipes with you um and we hope you like them please feel free to comment below let us know if there's anything you'd like for us to try uh and we will respond as best we can right we did it we did it. This is our first video, y'all, just a reminder, so we know it's awful, but... So be kind. Please be kind. I know. We'll get better over time. But cheers. Thanks for watching, um, and we'll see you next time. Remember to live, love, and eat. Kiss. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. 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 Mm. Mm hmm. Where'd you go? Mm. Hmm. You don't know where you went. That's so good. Mm hmm. Mm. It's delicious. So good. I love it.